Hi, and welcome to my talk um, <clears throat> about Renku, a platform for sustainable data science um, to be presented at the CWL conference this year. My name is Rokroshka, and I lead the project um, at the Swiss Data Science Center. And just quickly about the center, since it's probably not known to most people here, um, we were founded as a ETH domain initiative. ETH is the Federal Institute of Technology in Switzerland. Um, that it, between two schools, ETH Zurich and EPFL Lausanne. These were the two founding partners. And later on, a third office was added at the Polscher Institute in Wittgen. From 2025 onwards, we'll be a national research infrastructure in Switzerland, meaning that we will serve all Swiss academic institutions and not just the ETH domain. But the Renko project has been uh, a part of the SDSC almost since the start, and it's one of the four teams at the SDSC, the others being an academic machine learning team, a uh, private sector oriented applied machine learning innovation group, and a team focused on um, open research data. So in terms of the Renko mission, what we're trying to do with this platform is to facilitate sustainable data science. And what I mean by this is that we want data science to be um, created in a way that is reusable, reproducible, and along the way, we want to be able to capture knowledge as it is created uh, in order to power discovery, collaboration, uh, and reuse. And we want reusability to be automatic and not necessarily a lot of added work for people. So when we think about our users and what we're trying to accomplish, um, we think of this in, this in the sense of this knowledge pyramid. So we have at the very base, the foundational layer are the people working on data with computational tools. These are individual researchers that have very specific sets of needs and um, often friction when it comes to uh, working in a more reproducible fashion. So for example, they might find it difficult to share uh, code and data with others when they need to. They might find it hard to actually rerun their own code when needed, let's say for a paper review or a paper revision. Um, and they may not find it easy to reuse their teammates' work because they don't understand um, what is being done. Now, our focus is definitely to enable, first and foremost, this foundational layer, the individual researchers, because this is where the knowledge is created. This is where we can um, capture what is actually being done with data and how. And once we capture this information, um, we can then try to promote it to the levels above. So on the level of the organization, we can then start asking more interesting questions like um, how uh, how can we stop wasting work in the group? How can I showcase the group's work? Uh, how can I make the group more efficient? And finally, um, this information can bubble even further upwards onto the level of the domain or the funding body or the university uh, to know about uh, how researchers are connected across the domain, um, how funding money is being spent, and so on. So for us, really, the foundation is this individual researcher. This is what we focus on. This is the person that runs the code on data. But they don't exist in a vacuum, obviously. There are other people working with them. They're embedded in a group. They might have collaborators that are less technical than themselves. Uh, they might need to share computational resources with the group. And of course, they also have a group lead uh, who has potentially different incentives and different motivations um, than the individual researcher does. Now, in terms of uh, knowledge capture in Renku, what uh, we would like to accomplish is this sort of a picture where um, we can we can express what happens inside a project uh, in in a metadata structure that that tells us what uh, what goes on inside the project. So, for example, a project might have a data set that has some file that is used by some process that creates some output. Um, and what's interesting in Renku is that what we try to do is to preserve a global view on this metadata so that if another project comes along, uses some artifacts from another project, this is actually preserved self-consistently uh, inside Renku's metadata model. And more, most importantly, if this project then takes off and starts to do something with this, um, with this uh, derived data, then this is self-consistently captured uh, in this metadata structure. So this kind of knowledge graph is something that we would like um, optimally to arrive at. 
in order to understand how data is used, uh, who is using it, and um, what kind of uh, results come out of raw data sets. So our approach to capturing this lineage um, had a few requirements when we first set out the project. So we wanted to improve reusability, reproducibility, and visibility of projects. We wanted our solution to be language agnostic, um, and we wanted it to be simple with a low technical barrier. So we didn't want this to be yet another very complicated tool for people, for only technically savvy people to use. Most importantly, we didn't want to limit ourselves to a very specific workflow language. And the other thing that was very important for us is that this should be, whatever tool we, we devise should be interoperable. Um, so users should have, at some point, a choice of a workflow backend. So in our implementation, what we chose to do is to base things on a command line interface primarily. So for this lineage capture part, um, in order to wrap arbitrary command execution on the command line. So if you can run it on the command line, uh, Renko can wrap this and capture what's happening inside. Um, we also wanted to be very upfront about the um, interoperability part. So we wanted to capture lineage in a very generic way with some semantic representation that could be translated into whatever form it needed to be later on. This allowed us then also to be able to export uh, this information, this workflow information to different workflow formats for re-execution by workflow backends. And so in a picture, this looks kind of like this. Um, you can simply execute a script, but putting Renko run in front. This captures the workflow. It records it in this knowledge graph semantic representation, stores it on disk in your repository in some optimized way for retrieval. And then once you have this, you can actually reuse this on various backends. And note that there's nothing um, workflowy about how you run this code. Basically, we create a workflow out of things that you're doing. So here's a little um, CLI demo how this works. So um, you can simply run a Python file here. Um, this is this is a normal. Here, this I'm just executing a Python script. Uh, that generates some data. This is then the data inside that's been generated. I can run a second Python script that analyzes this data. Uh, in this case, it's just adding up all the integers, and we can look at the result. And note again, uh, these are just simple Python, uh, Python scripts that run here. However, now that I have captured uh, this information uh, about the um, how to generate these these artifacts, I can ask Renku to actually rerun one of these steps. And here, I don't have to remember how I generated this data. I just tell Renku to regenerate however this was done for me. And in this case, uh, I am actually using the CWL implementation, CWL tool to do this. So under the hood, Renku is generating an execution plan and passes, passes that to CWL tool and executes the, the step that's necessary to regenerate this data. And I note here I'm generating random integers. So when I regenerate this, I'm going to get new random integers, which means now um, that this data, the input data is now different. So um, when I tell Renku to check for me uh, whether my results are still valid with Renku status, it tells me, no, actually your downstream result is invalid because data has changed. Now we can tell Renko in the same way to simply update this result, again, using CWL tool. In this case, now it's running both steps. Uh, or so, so, Sorry, it's running the second step again to regenerate, uh, to re-execute um, the part that, that generates result.txt. So um, when I see now that the result is, is obviously uh, been updated as well. So this is just a very brief de demonstration of this basic um, command line tool functionality. Under the hood, what happened was that Renko generated a pretty complicated semantic representation of this workflow using a um, combination of ontologies, including our own ontology to express things that we that couldn't find elsewhere, but relying primarily on schema.org 
um, and uh, Provo as the base ontologies. And inside there, if you zoomed in on the last picture, you would see that um, there is this expression of having a plan to execute something uh, that produces inputs and outputs. And now what this means is that we have a representation, uh, semantic representation of basically the plan to execute something and something that has been executed. Now, once we have these workflows um, recorded, we can do a lot of different things with them. Um, so we um, we store these workflows that were recorded as, te as templates, and you can use a few different ways in Renko to see what is inside these workflows. Um, we can export them in a variety of formats. So here, uh, for example, um, showing you just what this looks like, this is automatically generated uh, CWL um, workflow. And we can also do some simple visual representation um, and um, RDF representation of, of uh, what, what is inside this workflow. We've added some additional features on top um, to make it easier to express workflows. Uh, for this, we implemented a very simple um, YAML uh, format for, for doing this, which makes it easier to build more complex workflows um, and follows very um, simple semantics that are similar to the automatically captured workflows. In addition, what you can do in Renku is extend the metadata with plugins. So because we have the semantic metadata layer, it means that any other metadata can be added to it uh, based on some accepted ontology. So for example, we have some plugins for this uh, for machine learning, which automatically extract information from code that runs and then add this to the knowledge graph. However, um, this, what I just showed you is sort of the legacy <laughs> rank. This is stuff that we've been working on for the last few years. Recently, though, we've embarked on a new, on a revised version of the platform. And our goal there is to really um, be a deeper connector for the research ecosystem. So integrating code repositories, data sources, and compute infrastructure in a more seamless way. Um, we really want the Renko platform to be at the center of this these ecosystems um, where you are more free to, to, um, to devise your projects um, as you wish with a combination of runtime environments, data sources, and code repositories. Um, and we also want to enable the sharing of all these um, artifacts more easily and to make them more discoverable. So we actually started to redesign the platform completely, which means that support for workflows in this new rank is kind of up in the air still, um, which is also why it's exciting to be taking part in this conference because we we want to kind of figure out some new direction here. Um, we most likely will not continue building on the same tooling that we've already developed, A, because we started to actually start to re-implement under the hood a workflow engine, which we don't want to be doing. It's uh, hard to maintain, and it's very heavily reliant on Git and its current implementation. Um, so this was very difficult to keep going, and it's also hard to have a big enough feature set to be interesting um, for more advanced users. So we're kind of in this weird spot between it being um, not quite easy enough for true beginners and not quite complex enough for advanced users. So our goal moving forward will most likely be to actually focus on capturing lineage from existing tools. So for example, if you had a CWL workflow and you ran it through some tool, we would be able to plug into that and extract metadata from it. Um, we want to do some of this automatically, so you'll be almost you will almost have a free choice of a workflow system, um, and users would also in this way have access to more advanced workflow features as they're needed, rather than having to rely on us to implement them specifically for Renku. Um, we would very much like to have some priority integrations for this with tools that can provide us with additional metadata. So if there's additional tool specific metadata that we could extract easily, um, that would obviously be a very big bonus and we would like to then prioritize integrating with those kinds of tools. So how to find out more about Renku and stay connected with us. Uh, if you're interested in this project, you can try out the current Renku at Renkulab.io. Um, we have a, we had a 
webinar and a blog post recently about this new direction Renko, that we're calling Renko 2.0. Uh, you can read about that on our blog. We also had a paper at NeurIPS describing what our vision for sustainable data science is like, especially with, when it comes to data sets. And if you're really interested in this line of work, um, we are doing a bunch of UX research right now about this new version of the platform. So if you're interested in participating in this and being involved in really the development of the platform, feel free to drop us a line. And you'll be able to test out this new beta uh, of the platform starting in June. And it initially is going to be semi-closed. So if you want access to the early beta and you're interested in this, please give us a shout at uh, this email address as well. We're trying. We're keeping our roadmap and all of our uh, feature design documentation public. So if you want, have a look at the design docs or reach us at any of those uh, social addresses below. So thank you very much and I look forward to your questions.